Thank you, Teresa, and good morning, everyone. Uh, had a, a sort of an interesting um, revelation to myself in the elevator on the way up here, and I think um, I'm going to cause the marketing folks to have a little bit of a heart attack because I'm not going to use my slides. Uh, I wanted instead to sort of chat with you about a, a very personal experience that I had, and um, it's principally related to the fact that I used to be in your seats. Uh, eight years ago, and by the way, eight years in Amazon terms makes me about a thousand years old, but eight years ago, I was at the FBI, where I was responsible for an organization that built intelligence analysis platforms. And we had a technology problem, and the technology problem was the fact that we kept expanding so fast, the file systems we built couldn't keep up with it. So the basic problem we had was that we took in a bunch of information from a variety of places. We have to manipulate it some, tear it apart, compare it to stuff we already had. Well, you need the, the decomposable components that you would expect in that circumstance. Compute, storage, database, queues, triggering systems, et cetera. And we built those internally with our staff. But the problem was our workload was doing this. And the other half of that problem, of course, is that our budgets were doing this. And so we had to find a better way to manage that particular issue. And Amazon had just come out with this thing called Amazon S3, which many people were like, what? What is an object store? I don't understand this thing. But it was perfect for what we needed. We needed to be able to put a, a blob of data into a store, and then when we needed it back, ask for it using a URL, rather than trying to find it in a file system, et cetera. And so we approached Amazon and said, hey, could you build this for us, please? We could really, really use it. And the answer from Amazon was a conversation, and it turned into, hey, would you like to come build these things rather than be a consumer of them? A what? And so a bunch of us said, yeah, sure, this, this sounds like a really fun deal. And we moved into Amazon and started building the components that are now virtual private cloud. So a group from the, pro the public sector moved into a crazy fast technology company and built the underpinnings that run the entire AWS cloud right now. So we own VPC and we built it. And people don't realize how influential the requirements of the public sector are. Literally the reason we built VPC was because of the security requirements that this customer set has. And that was something that sort of shocked me as, wow, this was really a seminal event in, in the ability of AWS to support protected workloads. Eight years later, of course, we're happy to have the US intelligence community say, yep, you guys are appropriate for our use. And it gets me to the point where now we look at all of the new features that we add every year for security and how they all tie back to the, the very fundamental components that you guys are asking for. So this year we launched about 187 new features that are security or identity related, up from about 140-ish last year. And it's an area that we continue to invest. If you look at the, the features that we have, it gives you the ability to have incredibly fine-grained access control. It gives you the ability to have very, very ubiquitous encryption across the infrastructure, to push down key management systems to all the systems that need to consume those cryptographic keys but do them at a velocity that supports the AWS scale and do them at a durability and availability that you expect as customers. And when you look at that and come back with what are the decomposable parts that we offer now as a platform, I could build that entire system that I had at the FBI using the pieces that are in AWS right now. As an exercise, we did. And the irony was a, a system that took us a whole lot of people to build in prior years, and an enormous amount of money as a taxpayer, it makes me hurt. We now built with four folks in three weeks and spent about 80 bucks. And the answer there is, the, the thing that was really liberating for me as a result of that was the fact that you can react rapidly to changing demands in your environment. No, we built that system because it was the only way to get at the information we needed to do our job to help protect our country. I now do the same thing within this organization to protect our customers. 
So we tear apart the information that we get about the bad guys, what they're doing, what's going on in our systems, et cetera, using the same theories that we used previously to identify the terrorists and identify the hackers. Now, the great news is that the access to that technology is not limited to my team. We use the exact same platform that you guys use. So every morning, for example, my team runs Hadoop jobs across all of our access logs in our infrastructure so that I can understand with precision what all of our people are doing when they're in contact with your information. So I literally get a email every morning that tells me on the EC2 infrastructure exactly what every Amazonian did when they executed a privileged command. So I know who touched what data, for what purpose, when, and what the result was. Now when I talk to CISOs in, our comp in their uh, customer organizations, and you say, you know, what's the visibility that you have into what's going on with your data and your infrastructure? It's often not what they'd like. And fundamentally, that's because there's a lack of visibility. And I think the number one thing that you get when you move into an API-driven infrastructure like AWS is visibility. Because there's no way to plug something in under a desk, there's no way to leave something in a server room and somebody left and nobody knows why it's there. And of course, by the way, they're always afraid to unplug it because you never know what's going to break. Because everything's recorded, you can see exactly what's going on. And you can see precisely who took what action, and you can decide, is that right for my business? And with that visibility, then, of course, there's auditability. You can prove to the regulators who oversee you, the congressional committee who wants to understand what's going on, who's doing what with that information. And most importantly, from a security professional standpoint, I can control things. I can control exactly who has access to what data from where, when, and how. And that puts me in a tremendously liberated position. When you hear Andy Jassy talk today in his keynote, he's going to focus on a lot of different new features out there, but he's going to spend, given the audience, an amazing amount of time on security features, which we're really proud of. And one of the things that we did was, again, extending the public sector model into the private sector the idea of continuous monitoring and continuous compliance is not something that's very uh, popular, really, in the private sector, but it's something, of course, the government focuses a lot on. And so we built a new service that Andy's going to talk about today that helps us internally do continuous evaluation of our security posture for all of our systems. And we're going to be happy to announce it to folks later on today as we roll it out to everybody at AWS. Uh, I own the application security team. We do our evaluations of all our services uh, in terms of how are they built, uh, what kind of crypto they use, how do they manage keys, um, how do we process various kinds of data. We took that knowledge, packaged it up into a service, and we're making it available now to customers. Um, so you'll hear more about that later on today. So to get back to my story originally, um, when I got an opportunity to, to talk to you folks, I wanted to say, I think the thing that you underestimate the most is the influence that you have on the technology business as a whole across the planet. Now, Teresa pointed out that many, many companies are using FedRAMP now as a proxy for appropriate operations because it describes controls that represent an amalgam of what people believe to be the right way to control data. And we've been FedRAMP compliant with our infrastructure for a long time. We're very proud of that. There's an enormous amount of work that goes into it. And the cool thing is now that that's applicable to much, much more than the people in this room. So I want to thank you for your influence and the way you're raising the bar for security across the internet. And with that, I hope you have a great day. Please enjoy reInvent.